Hello everyone, it's no secret that I am quite a big fan of the 996 generation 911. I will admit that is certainly part nostalgia, but it's also a genuine adoration for the way that these cars look, feel and handle. In my eyes they are one of the last real classic 911s and I know that there'll be plenty of people out there who will thoroughly disagree with me and say that well, if it's got water in it, a classic 911 it cannot be but I personally disagree. I've driven quite a few of these. I've driven C2, C4s, GT3s, C4S. I had the C4S for a bit, but I have never ever driven a turbo. In fact, I've only ever driven a 911 turbo once. It was a number of years ago, and it was a very heavily modified 993. Now, I recall that being quite an amazing experience, but at the time I hadn't driven an awful lot of cars, so I didn't really have much in the way of reference points. Now though, things are a little bit different. I came close to owning one of these on a number of occasions, in fact they're one of the cars that I considered when I was looking at my Evora, but I decided against it on the simple grounds of the fact that I'd had a 996 C4 before, rather my mother had and I'd driven it quite a bit, and when you're inside this doesn't really feel any different at all to the car that I had before. Uh, in fact, this particular example doesn't feel as nice because that car was equipped with the GT3 bucket seats and this has the standard seats, which I really don't like. I wasn't a fan of the sport seats in my C4S either because you sit really high and I have basically no room under the steering wheel here for my legs. It's very odd. It's quite a quirky driving position. Now recently, 996 turbo values in particular have strengthened quite a bit. At one point, you could pick one of these up for about 18 or 19 grand. In fact, I do remember seeing one sell for about 17. Okay, the guy was desperate and it wasn't a great example of the mark, but hey, 911 turbo for 17 grand, what a bargain. These days, these cars are commanding quite a bit more money, so I thought it was just about time to get myself in one and see whether they're worth the possibly increasing prices that's being asked for them, because on the face of it, I could see a very good argument for saying that, well, the C4S is all the 911 you would possibly ever need, or if you're, of course, track orientated, a GT3 or something will do you just fine. Now, the funny thing about this car is that when you're driving along at normal pace, this doesn't feel any different whatsoever to my C4S, and it really shouldn't because this shares the same body shell, the same suspension, extremely similar wheels with that car. The big differences, of course, are in the back. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, that engine produces an official figure of about 420 horsepower and about 410 pound-foot of torque. There was an X50 pack available that raised that to about 450 brake horsepower and nearly 460 pound-foot of torque. Granted, those power figures aren't especially impressive through the lens of 2019, where a hot hatchback with a remap will easily do that. But this isn't a hot hatchback from 2019. This is a everyday supercar from 20 years ago. Now, I've always had issues with people calling the uh, 911 Turbo a supercar because I just don't think that it is. Because it looks so similar to the regular 911, it's never had that kind of supercar exotic flavour about it. However, the 911 Turbo has always had a major trump card over your traditional supercar in the fact that they were easy to use, nice to drive, fairly practical, quite reliable, and you could stick miles on them without worrying too much. Sadly, in recent times, the Porsche market's gone a bit bonkers, and so people seem to be very afraid to drive these kind of high-end Porsches anymore. In fact, I don't really see turbo selling that much at all these days. That's no doubt going to be partly down to this obsession with the GT product cars as an investment, which I think is a terrible idea, by the way. 
and the fact that the regular Carrera is now obscenely quick. In fact, I'd be fairly confident in saying that even a modern box or Cayman could probably have this car round a track. But you don't buy a turbo for its easy day-to-day -day drivability and its friendly character. You drive it for what happens when you press the loud pedal. So let's find out what happens. I drop down a gear, I'm about 3,000 RPM. Now I'm going to bury my throat. And it pulls. And it pulls hard. There's a lot of turbo lag. Oh, I, I mean that a lot. But once it comes on boost, oh, it's a wonderful thing. And you can make quite serious progress in this. Now the gear shift in this is definitely better than the one in my C4S, but it's still not brilliant. This is a 996 Achilles heel. They can be made excellent, but as standard, they're never quite that good. It just got mid-range shoved to spare. Now I didn't even rev the car out there because I'm trying to avoid doing uh, irresponsible speeds. It's not quite as sonorous as my C4S, despite the fact that it does have a Miltec exhaust on it, it's from Sporty Cats. Um, the boost in this car has been left standard, so it should be producing more or less factory power figures, and um, it certainly shifts, but you do have to work for it. What is impressive, I find, though, is that off-boost response, and the fact that even in six gear at 2,000 RPM, the car has plenty of pull in it. Now, the steering feel is actually not that bad either. Is it quite as good and as pure as a plain old C2 or a GT3? No, probably not. But it is also infinitely better than a huge number of cars that I drive today. It's got a real genuine weight to it and it's got just this delightful feel. Now perhaps one of the best bits of news about the 996 Turbo is the provenance of that engine. In case you weren't aware, the 996 has got a bit of a reputation for having a rather fragile engine. Now, I'm not going to get into how warranted that is or how many were actually affected by the issues and all that sort of stuff. What I will tell you is the fact that the engine in this car has got absolutely no relation whatsoever with the garden variety C2 and C4 motor. It's totally different. It's a version of the much-loved Metzger engine, so it's actually close to the unit used in the GT3, the old air-cooled car, and it's even got a close relation in the old 911 GT1. It's a very strong lump. And in many ways, that will go a long way to justifying the prices people ask for these over a regular car. Should you buy one? Well, that's a very interesting question. If you're coming into the 996 afresh, you've never had a 911 before, and you want something that's a little bit old school, still drives and feels like a 911, but has serious performance, I would absolutely recommend one of these, no doubt about it. However, if you already have a 996, or even something like a 987 Cayman or Cayman S, I don't think I really could recommend it. And that's not because it's a bad car at all, but it is because the C4S, if you're after the 911 experience, really does give you all that you need. If you love a C4S but you simply want it faster, buying a turbo is probably the cheapest way to get that, but it's still not a cheap car. And if you want a real supercar ownership experience, I'm not sure that this is it, it just it flies a little bit under the radar. And that's always been the appeal for many people of the 911 is the fact that it is, in my mind, not necessarily the usable supercar, but the discreet supercar. It's bloody quick. In fact, if you were to put this against a uh, Ferrari at the time, which probably would have been a 360, I wouldn't bet on the car from Italy. No way. This thing's hella fast, and they were a lot cheaper too. Now, if you're going to buy one, I would recommend buying it from a specialist, uh, get someone that knows them to go over it, and uh, go through the history with a fine tooth comb, because even though that engine is fundamentally solid, uh, all the bits around it will have the same issues that can affect any car of this age, and particularly any 996, so 
check for rust, which isn't terrible on these cars, but it does exist. And make sure the turbos and things are in good condition, the car's not burning uh, an unusual amount of oil. They will always burn a, a little bit. That's just a thing of them. But make sure it's been serviced, looked after by people that know what they're doing, and uh, buy and enjoy. I mean, I guess I was expecting to maybe be blown away by the car, and it's simply not happening, but why should it? It is just the 911 that I used to own, but faster. So it is a brilliant car. It just doesn't particularly do anything for me, because maybe I've got to keep one eye on that speed a little bit more than I used to. And what I really like from a 911 is that driving interaction, whereas this thing is just a bit of an animal. So there you go. That is the 996 Turbo. Cool car, but if you're going to buy one, I'd maybe do something a bit different with it. You know what, if I did have one of these, it'd be speed yellow. I'd put the buckets back in it, so it'd be a bit more fun. I'd put a racing gear change in here, which you can get quite easily from a number of different places, and uh, make it a bit more of an animal, and have a lot of fun with it, take it on track, and just uh, embarrass people in GT3s, because um, if you maybe were into a GT3, but they're now unattainable, seriously, you can do some amazing things with one of these. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, comment below, subscribe, do all those things that you do because it does make a big difference to the channel and to me. And we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.